Did you did you tweet everything to like let people know that we're going live? Did you like do a hashtag Pokemon? I can. I will do that right now because I just went live. Work. So, um, Secret's about to do that too. Hold on, my Twitter just went weird. So, <clears throat> radio. No, Goldenrod Radio broadcast. This is the first radio broadcast from Goldenrod Radio. With Did me. I online? What? Okay, cool. I see it online. Yeah. That's pretty chill. So, uh, we've got I am Jelly Sound. I'll be your host for the day. Uh, with me is producer in Hi. studio uh, here at Mages Realm Sacramento. And through Skype, we have iShine, the brains of the operation. <laughs> Welcome. How's it everyone. going, everybody? <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna like just make it so I can only see chat because like I'm like 40 seconds behind and I'd yep. be like caught up <clears throat> watching the video and like the battle video. You might want to angle it a little bit more so it's not, you, so you can kind of see the battle instead of it being an awkward angle. Yeah, I'm fixing it now. Uh, yeah. I, it's it's hard to do. I got the most of the screen in and my, uh, the DS is goldenrod so it matches the color scheme. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, That's here. so perfect. I'm gonna pop this chat up. Close the window. That's a good idea. So, um, I shine. What did you want to get uh, started with talking so today? I, so what I think is, uh, I think we pretty much generally went over everything. I'm gonna go over it again as a little brief overview, and then we okay. can get started on what we're gonna be talking about. Uh, so what we're really gonna talk about very well. What we're going to talk about first is going to be the recent smog on OU bans, things like uh, a bunch of the Mega Evolution scheme banned, as well as some things that maybe could be potentially banned and that aren't yet. Also, we're going to be talking about season one of the Wi Fi Battles on tonight for the World GBU ranking. Then we're going to be talking about we're going to be transitioning into the Pokebank is coming out in a couple days and what that really brings to the metagame, as well as the free sell that all the players are going to be getting. We're then going to switch over to the VBC topic, things that that season is starting up. Uh, in a couple of weeks, and what that really means for everyone who wants to enter. Then we're going to go on to maybe a couple of things about Smogon and really introduce how they do their picks and bans and how a process of the Pokemon becoming banned. And after that, we're going to talk about our local tournaments, uh, what those are, where they are, what the prizes are, and how you can enter. Then we're going to talk about Instacheck and what that really was and what it meant for the metagame and what why I personally think that it's a very unhealthy program. And then after that, we're pretty much going to do questions and answers with the chat and do a closing statement and recap everything that should be the first broadcast. So, <laughs> All right, sounds, sounds, sounds uh, like sounds a plan. So uh, <laughs> <clears throat> let's get started with uh, the recent recent bans. Okay, so the, the, we should we start at the, the first thing that got banned or pretty much work our way backwards from where we are now? Well, uh, let's start with the first, and obviously the first to be banned were uh, the two legendaries, Zygarde, Xerneas, and Mewtwo, correct? Well, not not Zygarde. Uh, well, Yvettel, I'm sorry. Xerneas Yvettel, and Mewtwo. sorry. So those were the, the first real things that were banned. And, you yes. know, you guys could talk a lot, because I don't really want to talk that much, because uh, I'm in a library, <laughs> after all. So, if you guys could talk a lot, that would help. But, yeah, uh, Yvettel and Xerneas, the two legendaries on the cover of the new game, those are obviously banned. Their sets are way too good to be played in the overuse gear. And they didn't even really need testing. Everyone just knew that those would be too good. Also, Mewtwo, standard Uber since Gen 1. No real qualms there about that going yeah. to Uber. And these, uh, these Pokemon are, are put in this tier uh, because they're just the total base stats are higher than any other Pokemon uh, just totally. So, and just movesets that they get, they're just, they're really good. It's unfair for them to be used against uh, Pokemon in a lower tier because they'll just dominate uh, the, the market. I think it's kind of interesting, yeah, well, though, considering the fact that, like, when you actually try to capture them, that, I don't know, I didn't have trouble catching either of them at all. Like, <laughs> if at all, I, I think I did one Raichu Thunderbolt, got it down to 4 HP, tossed a Pokeball, not even a great or anything else, else ball, and it just, boom, one Pokeball and a Thunderbolt, like... So, well, considering the fact that it's like a computer controlling it at that moment versus an opponent controlling it, is, it, were they really that much more powerful? Well, the thing is, they have very low capture rate. Or sorry, very high capture rates. <laughs> the higher it is, the easier it is to catch them. Mm -hmm. And it's a part of the storyline. You need to catch them 
to actually be the game. So, if it was like Mewtwo, if you were to buy Mewtwo, he has a very low capture rate. So, things like that are a lot harder to get. Mm. Their catch rate has nothing to do with how their how high their base guns are or what yeah. moves they get that no other things in the game. When you fight the Pokemon in the wild, uh, it's completely untrained, whereas your Pokemon have probably uh, been leveled up yourself and trained quite a bit. So that's the reason why sometimes they're, uh, they seem a little lackluster when you're battling them in the wild. <clears throat> but when you uh, fully train them and use them in a competitive battle, they can completely just dominate. Because other, you can still EV train those yep. Pokemon, even though they're already at a high level, <clears throat> right? Well, okay. yeah. Also, like, if Edel gets that, like, Aura Wing or Oblivion Wing, and Xerneas gets Geomancy, two moves that are on. That are there's no other Pokemon that can move even similar to like that. So that's mm. one of the reasons why just straight up those things are out of here. And you can't breed those on any other Pokemon either, can no. you? <laughs> no, no. You, you can't you breed can. legendaries at can't all. Breed leg well, I meant like get an Oblivion Ring like yeah. on a Talonflame. You can't do that at all, right? That How broken work. would that be? That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, So uh, the next, next uh, Pokemon to be added to the Uber tier was Blaziken. Is. Skin. And he was a standard Uber back in Gen 5, and he wasn't in Gen 4, but Gen 5 really gave him the stabbed high jump kick, and his ability, hidden ability, to a speed boost. And what that means is at the end of every turn, he's going to get a 1.5 speed boost. Now, that can pretty much stumble out of control, and people were talking in Gen 5, you know, why don't you just ban speed boost boy skin? But then people, they, they did it like that, and people just threw choice cards on their boy skin and still killed everything, because boy skin has the potential to have a moveset of four moves, with 120 base power or higher, and that's just just good, you know, throw him out of the right situation to kill three things for. Him. What what it means to be Uber is like this is one of the reasons why uh, Yvetto and Sternius and you two all fall into this category too. What it means to be Uber is that it this Pokemon sets up for your the rest of your team. So if Blaziken kills their wall, now your other Pokemon have the ability to do so. If it takes three other Pokemon to kill Mewtwo. You can then sweep them to death with your card count. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that makes sense. I think that's one of the reasons why boys can span. Part of it is also the, specifically the numbers uh, that happen when, uh, let's see, you have speed boost Blaziken. We'll use one protect and get a speed boost. He's in faster than most things uh, in the OU tier, <clears throat> and with us with uh, without a sword stance, he can two hit two hit KO just about any Pokemon in the entire tier. Uh, with one sword stance, he can one hit KO or two hit KO. All, everything in the uh, yeah, in the OU but they tier, can't really swap is... in on it. <clears throat> which is why even if B boost is banned, he's just good even with Blaze. And also, he got to talk about he got a Mega Evolution this gen. So yeah, it's really hard to say that guy's that guy be legal. There's more arguments against it than for it. He would say Talon Flame is a great check and a great counter to it. But should you be forced to bring Talon Flame to counter one Pokemon? No, you shouldn't. That's not fair for the meta game. It's not healthy at all. Yeah, it's uh, the the goal when they uh, ban Pokemon is to keep the metagame healthy so that uh, when you're battling competitively, that you don't have to bring specifically uh, a Talonflame in order to check it, uh, because <clears throat> you you can have other Pokemon on your team. You might not want to use Talonflame, and if there's only two Pokemon that can uh, check this one uh, really overpowered Pokemon that everybody's using, then you pretty much have to bring it, and that's... Uh, it becomes a very stale meta, basically. Yeah. Everyone using the same yeah. Pokemon, and that's not what Pokemon is about at all. Like, there's 700. Gets, so, yeah, there's 700 <laughs> different dudes to use, so... If, I mean, I, I'm going to be honest, though. Like, as a person that always loved Torchic, like, it, it was kind of fun being able to use him for a while. It's just kind of sad that he's a little bit broken. Well, you can still use the, uh, what is it, the Beat Boost... Uh, Combustion with an EV light. light. Yep. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the combustion. Come on. With, with EV light, he yeah. still looks ugly. <laughs> Blazekin looks badass. Uh, yeah. Um. So we can talk about the next one because that's pretty much just obvious stuff. The next mm, one definitely. is the uh, Gengar, right? Correct. Yeah, and that's uh, oh, really? part. Most of the reason was Shadow Tag, I believe, which is uh, the wow. same reason that in Gen Four, uh, Wobbuffet was moved up to Ubers. <clears throat> And why not? Yep. Don't forget why not. So what what Gengarite brings to the table is giving your Gengar a speed boost to be faster than anything in the tier. Not a single thing in that tier is really faster than Gengar. And he has, he has Woody Shadow Tag that unless you're a ghost type, you can't quit. And well, the Gengar doesn't really get that many setup moves. No Pokemon can really switch in on Gengar safely without getting trapped into a Parish Song, which is going to be coming out after Pokebank. 
they just made the right decision and banned it early. Because if you were to just be like, Tom Parrish song protect, you know, you they can't kill the Gengar. It's an automatic Gengar is going to kill two or three Pokemon, which, by the definition of Uber, that's up for the rest of your team to sweep. So I think it's a very Definitely. safe ban by Mogon to uh, ban Gengar. There's a lot of discussion about it. I think it was four or five. Oh, it was, it was about 200 pages worth of just constant talk about at the highest level of play why to ban it. And I agree with it. Mm -hmm. The uh, <clears throat> the thing about it being able to just take out a Pokemon on team, let's say you crafted your team with uh, Pokemon so you have good type coverage and uh, you have like some walls uh, just to be able to, to take care of any team that's thrown at you. Uh, with a with a Mega Gengar, they can pick the the one or two Pokemon that are on your team that are a complete threat to them, and they can just take them out with a Destiny Bond Shadow Tag that they just can't, they won't be able to <clears throat> to use that that Pokemon because it'll, it'll die instantly. Um, well, it's not even about the Destiny Bond. It's it, once Pokemon comes out, Gengar is gonna have Perish Song. You can go Perish Song, Protect, Sub, Switch. They're dead, and they have to just deal with it. And you you can just come back in later. That's yeah. I mean, generally, when you see, it's like a two, well, relating it to card games or something, it's like a two-card combo, and after after something gets overused like that, it's just generally not healthy for it to be in the game as well. I mean, there just, are going to be people that will cry about it, because everyone mm -hmm. likes being broken at the same time, but, yeah, it's just, well, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, I just think that it's, it also is too easy. It would be really fine if that Pokemon took a to play, like you had to make the correct choice, but if you just send it out against anything... And you know you can immediately get away. You know you don't see if a Wobbuffet that perish long be the best Pokemon ever. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, Perishong and Shadow Tag are uh, definitely uh, potentially abusive. <clears throat> All right, so that's pretty much Gengar. Uh, that that covers it. You know you can swap. No one can swap in on him and safely not die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is is right. bad. Yeah. Bad for uh, that... fun. <laughs> so the, most fun for recent, the most recent ban by Smogon into the uh, Uber tier was the Kangaskhan item. Now, what that did was it gave, changed Kangaskhan's ability to parental bond, which what you hit was your moves twice, and the second one is 50% less damage. But that, that really lets you pretty much hit with two dizzy punches for two chances to confuse two power punches. Each, one, each time you hit with one of those, it raises your attack. Two rock slides, you know, double potential to double flinch Jesus. what that what that pretty much opened up was the you know nothing is safe against Genghis Khan because after you get the power up punch there's nothing there's not a single Pokemon that here they can only swap in on it and not die if you have a correct moveset I also have the priority to sucker punch I prefer crunch over sucker punch because once you have like crunch earthquake you know dizzy punch or return or and power punch nothing can really swap in on you and, and get away scot-free yeah well, I mean, like, how are people handling that before? I mean, like, it's not like everyone that was winning had the Kangaskhan Knight going on. Like, how, well, how did it, people take it? It was. On? Once they banned Gengar, mm -hmm. everyone switched over to Kangaskhan. Everyone. We went to a tournament that had, what is it? I think there were four Mega Kangaskhans of the, like, ten players. Top four. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was four. Top no, four. It was three, everyone was using three Mega Kangaskhan. Kangaskhans. Three Mega <clears throat> Kangaskhans, and in the top four. Mm -hmm. And I think Patrick was the guy who used Lucario, and that's just only because Lucario was a counter to Mega Kangaskhan. Mm. It's just brought too much to the table. And the reason why I think that they actually got the official ban was, you know, if someone is going to sword stance, you can taunt it. You, you can't really taunt power punch. Nope. <laughs> no. Yeah, at all. True. Like, the only thing, uh, strategies against it were as simple as, uh, like, either you had to abuse uh, Rocky Helmet and, uh, like, Rough Skin or Iron Barbs, which... Uh, when Kangaskhan would hit twice, it would uh, do, deal some damage. Rocky Helmet. <clears throat> yeah, That's or awesome. uh, <clears throat> um, just the moveset was so versatile that really there wasn't a whole lot to do, but a lot of the times uh, they run a normal yeah. attacks, fighting type attacks, and sucker punch, which means that you could send in a, <clears throat> a ghost and set up on them, uh, mm. potentially. Well, and also another thing, like, it was also just too easy to play that moveset. There was no skill involved yep. with Mega Kangaskhan. That's He's... another reason why it was not healthy. And what else did it? It's, it's stats got a lot better too. It was ridiculous, but I think it, it just it's not healthy. You know, if everyone using the same mega, there's no reason to use any other megas because they're not as good as Mega Kangaskhan. Do you think in general that the megas are just gonna slowly get banned out? I mean, like you know, I I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think they should. 
but you know, there's some megas that just suck. You know, like I don't think that Mega Absol is going to be banned anytime soon. But Mongon doesn't just ban things. If it's the no, last, he's... if it's the last Mega around, though, I mean, eventually people are going to cry broken for Mega. No, they're Absol not. As well. No, because... you know, it's easily to take down. No, like it'll well, the be thing easier is most... to just not use a Mega. Uh, <clears throat> most most Megas uh, are actually weaker than their Life Orb counterpart. Mm. Life Orb Absol is a lot stronger than Mega Absol. Mm. Well, Life Orb Kangaskhan's not as strong. Pretty much all the broken ones are slowly being uh, banned out. I think the next one on the list would be Lucario. You know? After that, could potentially be Mawile. Oh, I can what see Mawile. Think? Mega Mawile eventually getting hit. Because Mega Mawile is just like a shittier Mega Kangaskhan. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's pretty much how it works. Um, I don't think like Mega Titar will get banned. I don't think... Uh, Mega Garchomp won't get banned. What do you guys think about Megas that are going to get banned, possibly? Um... I don't know which others would uh, would get banned. I know the really popular ones now that I see are uh, end up being Mega Titar. Uh, I Mega see a lot Garchomp. of Mega Mawiles. Um I don't see a lot of Mega Garchomps. Yeah. I think his his lower speed is turning people away from that. Mm. Uh, I see mm. a lot of Mega Mega Charizards though. Yeah, but I don't yeah, think he's good enough to get banned. I think no. he's very. They're both they're both very good. I think they're very healthy. You know, Charizard was a Pokemon that was in the RU tier last gen for the past few gens. Mm -hmm. And by uh, wanting again this more versatility, you know, it, it just makes Pokemon better. You know, it might be UU, he might be OU. I see, I see. And also, all these Pokemon that are banned are only banned in singles by Smog on format. You can still use them in doubles. You can still use them in VGC. So, that's yeah, and cool. on Battle Spot. And Battle Spot. Did I... So I pretty much we, we just summed up Gengar and Kangaskhan. I think that's I think we'll agree with the ban. You know, I, I there are ways to play around it. You know, you could just bring like a, a Gyarados and intimidate it, or a Salamence and intimidate it. Then you could pop a Dragon it and set up on them. That's one of my counters for those Pokemon. But you know, it, it, you have to be forced to bring those things, and that's just not healthy. That's my opinion. Yeah. Do you see any uh, other Mega Evolutions? Uh, currently, who are who are next up on the on the list on the chopping block? I've heard. I personally think it's Lucario and maybe Scizor. Oh, I'd be so sad if Mega Scizor goes. <laughs> Both well, of those are Scizor. also really good Megas. Yeah. Scizor for the past four years has been number one on I the OU ladder. Yeah, he's so, so cool. So <laughs> they just made it he better. Deserves it. <laughs> yeah. When you're a champ, you know, you just everyone wants to take you down. No, I'm mm -hmm. kidding. The thing is, like, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it even better to say but hey bro yeah. don't make it any better you know <laughs> yeah. don't don't buff it <laughs> yeah so but it, it'll be a ban on scissor right not just scissor though yeah of course yeah. actually you never know scissor could get banned you know salamis has been banned in the past so could potentially go either way let's go to the, the next thing on the list of talking about also zygarde didn't actually get a ban a lot of people think it's going to be yu yu now zygarde is People look at it, they'll get its stats like, oh, it's just a shitty card now. But in reality, you know, Zygarde brings a lot more to the table than Garchomp doesn't. He has a bit more bulk. He's a little bit slower. Uh, he doesn't get the, you know, the, the power that Garchomp does, but he does get Dragon Dance and Extreme Speed. He's pretty much like a, a fusion of Dragonite and Garchomp. Wow. So I, what do you guys think about that Pokemon? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't see a lot of Zygarde's. I don't, uh... I don't particularly like just the way he looks. Uh, I've never used him like to, to battle, so I can't really say uh, how he would be used. Um, but he doesn't seem very popular currently uh, as a Pokemon. Yeah. What, what he does bring is uh, he is that, is that one ability that completely uses and negates one of the other auras. So yeah. that's one of the reasons why people turned away from him at the beginning. But he does actually have Uber stat. You know, people didn't use Curium in black and white, but mm -hmm. the Curium. Uh, Black was actually OU at the end of Black and White 2, so things with the stat, like, I'm, I'm sure by the end of the meta, it will definitely be put. That's what I'm sure of. Yeah. Do you think the extra bulk matters too much? I mean, I remember we talked about walls before during the tournament scene, like, when we were playing that, like, a team of walls will definitely probably get you into top four or something like that. Yeah, Do you think I, the extra I bulk think, on him is going to matter? I think that when, like, if we were talking about T's team, for example, that has, like, the Gliscor and the Blissey, and he's using a Garchomp, I think he'd actually be better off using a Zygarde. Because Zygarde can't... If you were to my my, uh, my Garchomp Dragon Claw, a Zygarde, for like 60%, and I'm like, what the hell, you know? 
sixty percent more effective. You know, I'm not on the guard now. So like in dragon versus dragon matchups, also very strong. You can just pop dragon dances in their face. And he gets extreme speed too. I just think has a great move to that. And that eventually it will definitely be play. Because he gets that stab earthquake. Yeah. That's like huge. Yeah, that's my two cents. I think it's a very, very good Pokemon and I'm gonna use it eventually. Yeah. So we we can expect to see you on a on a Friday battle having that in your team? <laughs> Uh, I'll test it on my stream first, but right. yeah. Right. Okay, so that's pretty much all I had to cover for the recent uh, bands of Smogon. Anything else you guys want to talk about for that? Um, let's talk about uh, places. Um, well, we were, we kind of discussed places where you don't have to play by Smogon rules. Uh, some some tournaments VGC doesn't. Uh, some channels on Twitch, uh, the people won't necessarily adhere to Smogon rules. I'm one of those channels uh, that I don't. I don't mind if people bring in their Blazikens or uh, or their uh, Gengarites or Kang Mega Kangaskhans, but uh, most of the time you just need to ask if they're playing by Smogon rules before you uh, want to bring in your team. Uh, that if you if you are liking to use Mega Kangaskhan or Mega Blaziken or Mega Gengar. Hmm. Well, I don't know if you guys can hear the sirens out next to me. <laughs> anyways, <Yeah. laughs> uh, Los Angeles. So, well, anyways, what? We should really just cover what Smogon rules are then. We should cover what Smogon is. Smogon is a website where a lot of people pretty much come and that's the, the, the website for a 6v6 single. They pretty much make the rules, they have a council to vote on picks and bans, things like that. So most people let Smogon do the work and decide what is banned for them instead of their own rule. Which mm -hmm. is completely fair, someone has to be in charge, correct? Yeah, it's good to have a good framework for competitive play overall, um, just to keep everybody on the same sort of level and having having fun. Definitely. Yes. Now, that while Smogon is like the the people that are in the know for singles, there's actually no money involved in Smogon. Like you can't win anything from Smogon. That's just a general rule that they put out. The official rules put out by Nintendo and Game Freak are EGC rules, which are a lot different, and it's completely different format so that one is actually double format and you can pretty much use a lot of things there that you can't use in smogon but there's a lot of things that you can not use in EGC that are weak on smogon so they're just completely different formats with completely different metagame hmm. and now i respect that there are channels that don't play by smogon rules and play by their own rules uh i respect that but it, I, I really think that a lot of the, the channels should just assume that smogon should be how it's played. Would you, I mean, like, basically saying that it's a general standard or something like that. But, I mean, when you're playing with your friends or whatever, or just, like, having a having a change of pace away from that scene, I don't think it's too toxic or anything like that for, for Pokemon to... If both parties are agreeing to not care about the smog on rules for it to be, you know, ignored a little bit. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a choice you gotta make. Yeah. Well, the thing is, people that don't agree with those, like, I could really... I could care less almost if I mean they bring stuff that's uber and everything. Well, true. But if if I'm fighting someone and they say that they're the best and that they don't play by like smog on rules, you know, it makes them look very ignorant. Very ignorant. Oh, okay, you know, I see what you're saying. They're obviously not, not the best. <laughs> all you want to do is technically like, I'm not going to say cheat, but all you want to <laughs> do is, is bend the rules and not conform to anyone. You know, like, it's like, it's like bringing a, a gun to a sword fight, you know? Yeah, it's being a nonconformist, <clears throat> you know? It's being, <laughs> being unfair, sort of. Uh, I mean, if, personally, like, I have the most fun when I'm bringing Pokemon from, uh, like, multiple, like, tiers, as, as I'd say. Because I, I like to bring the Pokemon that I like the best. So some of my favorite Pokemon uh, tend to be in, like, a really low tier. Um, yeah. But like, then, like, for oh, it. Oh, oh. For it. And then some can, of the Pokemon, well, yeah. That's awesome. You can do that. That's fine. And th there's no tiers threat well, out yet, really. Yeah, but once the tears are out, if you ask someone for an NU battle and they say, "Oh yeah, we'll play NU," and then they bring a Mewtwo, you know, you're like, "What?" The okay, hell? well, yeah, but I mean, I think you you already started the social contract there when you said NU. You know, like they should if they don't know what that means, that and and you, they agree to it, that's being scumbaggy. <laughs> if you're just saying yeah. like you want a battle, I think you're opening up yourself to anything because I mean, like yeah. little kids. I mean, little kids love, like Pokemon as well, uh -huh. and they'll see a bunch of adults playing Pokemon and be like, "I want to battle you." And I mean, for instance, there's there's a child in my Taiko group, and he wants to battle me really bad, 
But he's like, I'm going to use Mewtwo and Nevadol. I'm like, those are all heck of broken Pokemon. I'm like, that's not fair. I'm like, well, wait, but I can use broken Pokemon too then. You know, but you don't well, want to crush little kids' dreams either. But that's I always want to crush little kids' dreams. Every little kid dreams. I play, I crush his dreams. Oh, my God, that's I, I challenged a kid to a Pokemon battle. I was babysitting. Uh, he did his <laughs> homework. Baby- yeah. He went to sleep on time. <laughs> and he ate all his vegetables because, because he lost. Because you were stronger than him. <laughs> you just got to dominate him. <laughs> At the end of Gen 4, I hadn't lost in forever. And like I've went all the t- online tournaments I played, and I was doing really good. I might be perfect for single. Yeah. And I was at an anime convention. This kid said, "You want a battle?" And I'm like, "Are you sure you want a battle, me little kid? I will show no mercy." And he's like, "I've never lost before." <laughs> <laughs> so I bring my OU team. <clears throat> my OU team, and I battle. This you... kid has a full shiny Uber team. Oh wow! And he actually knows what he's doing. And after about a 20 minute battle, I barely squeak out the win. Oh. I was using no OU stuff. Yeah. And then I was like, what the hell, kid? You know, you obviously know what you're doing. Why'd you bring a full Uber team? I and see. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I'm a kid. <laughs> I'm, a ki- I'm a kid. Oh, man. And so I was like, huh. So well, ever I since mean, then, that, that's called, t- like, I, I guess I can relate that to when um, I was learning how to play basketball and my cousins are all like, 15 and such and i'm seven and and they loved swatting me you know and they, t- they told me that they're trying to teach me how to pump fake you know like they're like we're, we're t- learn how to play with what you got so i guess i guess it's healthy guys but... <laughs> no, no. It's, Listen, it's just but natural you didn't, you didn't let me finish my story oh. i'm sorry phil i mean i shine go for it so, i shine so pretty much when so that kid told me that like we didn't that he rolled we didn't say anything and so i pretty much took what that kid did yeah. And now, whenever I whenever I go anywhere, whenever people ask me to battle, I don't like if I'm just like standing around and a person comes to me RL like at anime convention or someone asks me to battle. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, let's battle. I have a full Uber team on me at all time. Ah. Uh. I've become the little kid. Just in case. I, no, not in case. Like it's no. fun to use Ubers. Ubers is its own format. <laughs> Ubers, Ubers and are you know what? Fun. I they, see. they can say, what, what's with all the Ubers? And I'm like. Okay, we'll play a real game after you lose to my Uber team. You know, <laughs> after you lose to the Ubers. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I'm not going to lie. It's fun to play with Uber, but if I'm... I, I don't know. I'm a jerk. It's because of all the <laughs> exclusive moves. I, like, that's why I, I, sometimes I like using uh, legendaries, because they get the, the ominous ominous wings. Random the moves. Sacred well, fires. Well, I just, I just like playing with the Ubers. Cause, like, <laughs> it's like it doesn't even really matter. It's like you had, it really doesn't matter. Like Uber battles, I've mm-hmm. never once taken an Uber battle seriously, which means it's more fun to play. Yeah. No, I can I can see that. I can agree. I have my Uber team ready at all time. <laughs> you hear that? You hear that, viewers? <clears throat> you want to take on you go to Sound or iShine? You, you can ask Uber for his Uber team anytime you, you want. That out after Pokebank, though. <laughs> Speaking no, no, of, it's, uh, it's fine. I'll, I'll just file it by Gen Five. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, I'm sorry. Was it a, a, a apple, Applejack pony? Oh, it's a brony. <laughs> it's cracking me up. They're, they're, you're, don't worry. We won't hurt you. We won't hurt you at this all. Someone in the cast uh, <laughs> says, I'm a little kid, and now I'm uh, afraid. I'm reading it. I'm reading it. <laughs> okay, yeah. I suck. I'm, I'm learning this, so you can you can fight me. You can fight me and feel good about yourself. There so you go. So does it really say when I, like, talk? Does it show when I'm I'm talking on the chat? Um, It would if there were more than one person, one person. on the call. So uh, what they see is your face. Uh, you look really happy in your Santa hat. And, and it's very uh, festive. Yeah. It's very fitting. Very festive. <laughs> All right. Anyways. So we should get back to Get back on topic. track? Yeah. What's the next one? Oh, I think it was Pokebank. The Pokebank? No, 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 like yeah, no, it's not. Nope. No, it's not. It's I'm not. sorry. Okay. <laughs> the next is the season one of the Wi-Fi is ending tonight in about four hours. Now, what we should really cover is like what the Wi-Fi ladders are, the different format they used. What are the meaning of rankings and prizes? So, pretty much Wi-Fi the ladder is how you play online. You know, I'm pretty sure all you guys have tried to go online and maybe play free or rank. Well, this is what we're talking about, rank. And this is the first season of Sunny Night. It started when the game came out. Very interesting. And it's pretty much going until, well, tonight. And there's different formats. There's singles, doubles, triples, rotation, and special. Now, special is a format where you can only use stuff from the newest game, and that changes every season. And what, one of the things you get for prizes is at the end of the season, if you're in top three for your region, you get a little icon, and it's surrounded by like gold, silver, or bronze, and you can only get that one. So, 
at the like me i'm actually personally third mm -hmm. right now for north america i'm gonna get the little icon unless someone like snakes my spot <laughs> i can't really play i'm in a library but um yeah unless someone snakes my spot i'll get a little icon that says i was i got bronze and i'll have that for the rest of gen 6 and i think that's really cool you also get points for like the actual vgc's mm. you get a point for that that circuit for playing online so this is sponsored by through nintendo Yep, this is all through Nintendo. So VGCs and the the battle spots online with uh, Pokemon Global Link, they're all connected in terms of uh, points? Well, the amount of points you get from the battle spot is very low, and you only, only get those for being at the very top of the ladder. Mm. So, yeah, it's not like you can just be the best in the world at lands and get invites to all the world championships by playing online, but it actually helps, like, you know, when you got, like, a like a B plus and you just want that A minus, you know, and you got like eighty nine percent, they're like, Oh, here you go. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda like that. And so you're you're third on the North American ladder right now and you'll probably stay that way for season one, is what you're saying. I'm gonna check it again. I checked it like an hour ago. <laughs> I see. <laughs> He's watching his spot. Hopefully, hopefully everyone just loses and I go for number one, right? That'd be <laughs> Maybe. fantastic, yeah. yeah. For you. The thing is like I can't, I can't I don't really want to play at the library because if I get DC I'd automatically lose. Oh yeah, the, it just closed actually. So I see. awesome. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Are you saying the rankings just Are, closed? Did, did season one just end? Is it, is well, it Japan time? It's, it's, well, no, it just says currently undergoing maintenance, which means okay, so you can't play. <laughs> Man, you are getting called out so hard right now. I shine. <laughs> I can't play. Yeah, you can't play because you're in a library, but. Watch out for Applejack. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna get you. He's coming to get you. <laughs> play showdown. <laughs> maybe later. I'll try and connect. Maybe. All right, man. Anyways, this, and... this. I'm sorry. The battle that's on stream right now. Like, <laughs> there's so many shiny Pokemon. I'm. I'm in awe. I think I was playing a full tiny team, but I think I. I think I lost actually. Oh. <laughs> I'm right. Actually, only played Anyways. the ones I won. Secret. Yeah. <laughs> Brody's. We should also talk about what season two has to offer because season two should be even bigger because yep. it's pretty much all the people who got the game and tried playing ranked in season one. Mm -hmm. Well, we we've lost all the people who stuck. Mm. So we're only going to have people that are good playing, and what the special format is for the season is the exact same rules as the VGCs. So it's going to be doubles format with only things in the cloud with it. Mm. So I think all the people who are any good at the game are only going to play that format. Does that mean uh, when you go to a battle spot that there won't be uh, single battles offered, or triple battles, or rotation? No, no, no they'll, all be, they'll all be offered. It'll be the same. There's singles, doubles, triples. Okay. Uh, rotation and special. What special battles means is it's going to be changed every season, and what this season's special battle is, is doubles format with only Palette native. Okay, so special battles will be VGC rules, so it's a good place to practice for VGCs. Mm. It's uh, the only place to practice for VGC. That's why it makes it so important. Also, you don't really want to play with your username, because people are going to be figuring out who's who and who uses what, who's testing what, and you can check back people's profile to see what they pretty much used, who used what, victories, win-loss ratios, so all that stuff's online for people to check. So if, if you're like super high up on the ladder, I would recommend getting a second game and, and making it like a barcode account. I see. And playing like that, that's probably what I'm going to do. Hmm. Just got to be, got to be careful. Yep. So... I mean, are there any kind of new... Because those bans that we talked about earlier in the show uh, was for Smog on, not for VG, VG, mm -hmm. yep. C or Well, you, you can't use uh, Zygarde and uh, Xerneas and Yvettel and probably a couple other things. Me too, I you believe. Can, you too, yeah. But you can use most Pokemon there. Yep. Okay. And there's an item clause there too. You can only use one of each item. Mm -hmm. One of each item. Oh, so that includes so you berries. Can't, you can't have uh, two oh, citrus yeah. berries on your team. Um, you can't have multiple leftovers, which most people... Uh, I think even Smogon doesn't play by like you can have as many citrus berries as you want. Wow. Yeah. But not with VGC. Which is fair, you know, because you have to be able to scout the items and team previews a really big, really big thing. Mm. All right, so that's pretty much all I want to talk about for the end of season one. Mm -hmm. What we can go over to now is to the Pokebank coming out in a couple of days, right? Co yeah, that's really exciting it's for very, a lot yeah. of people. Uh, a lot of people looking forward to that Pokebank. About five dollars a year. Well, the first month's free, though. Yep, first month's free. So why don't you talk about uh, what that really means and what you get for doing Pokebank? 
Alright, uh, for the Pokebank, which is coming out, it's going to be a way, um, first and foremost, a way to transfer your Pokemon from your previous generation uh, DS games to your X and Y game, which is going to be incredibly useful for people who uh, played a lot in Gen 5 and transferred all the Pokemon to Gen 5 and were playing uh, last, uh, last Gen really competitively. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to bring a lot of uh, different move sets to Pokemon uh, because in Gen 5 there were so many move tutors available that uh, Pokemon just had just these huge rich move pools and uh, we're gonna see a lot of that coming with the Pokebank. What the Pokebank also offers is uh, I think it's 3,000 boxes or 3,000 spaces. Wow, wow. Uh, or th or th maybe it's 3,000 slots uh, in, uh -huh. in uh, like 300 boxes. Oh, that's uh, still a lot of boxes. But for, for I think it's five dollars a year uh, you can just have so much extra box space that you'll never have to you'll never have to worry about what releasing anything. You just wonder trade it ever wonder trade stuff to switch it up. Um, it's gonna be really exciting. I think it's gonna be really great for uh, bringing all 700 Pokemon into your game. What's interesting about that is the fact that like it's it's kind of showing the evolution of the mind frame of where Nintendo's going. Like when you think of Pokemon, I mean everyone in the general public will generalize it as oh this is a children's, you know, battling Pokemon collecting game thing, right? And you don't expect children to really care to pay or even have a way to pay five dollars to a to a corporation just for extra box space. So, in a sense, it's it's literally being targeted towards the maybe college audience and up. You know, like do you, do you think that that's where they they're trying to streamline Pokemon into? I mean, even in this game, there was such great um, changes to how the game was being felt like it was being played. Easier catch rates. Um, the gym leaders felt like nothing to me. I, I don't know how it felt for you guys. I'm pretty sure it felt like nothing. Um, yeah. Yeah, so like... This the, game, the skill level in this, this particular game was a little lower. So, it, it, like, in that in that skill level dropping, it made me feel that they were trying to go back to grabbing the, the, the children audience, trying to make it easier for them. But at the same time, here they are, you know, giving us an option to pay for more. Not pay to win. Definitely not pay to win because it's just grabbing your Pokemon from the old school games. But I don't know. I just I find it kind of interesting. In that it's sense. also um, even though it was easier, it's easier to raise Pokemon, catch Pokemon, and, and beat the game. Mm -hmm. uh, they put in so many things this generation for competitive battling, uh, like super training, like uh, just everything <laughs> that you can use. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's my. Uh, that just helps competitive battling. The new ways to breed uh, five of Pokemon incredibly easily. Mm -hmm. uh, it just makes the game so much better, so much easier to get into the competitive battling. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Gen four and Gen five, and even pre pre even previously beyond that, it was just extremely difficult to to jump in with good Pokemon because uh, the people who had the five IV Pokemon they were perfectly EV trained and had the correct nature and everything just dominated. Definitely. We should also talk about what you get for doing the Pokebank. Oh, Celebi. Oh, yep. yeah, you get the, the exclusive Celebi. Yep. And that's going to be kind of hard because what people are going to be doing is going back in all their old games and trading over all their old legendary. Uh, they want to trade them over the Gen 5 first and get all the move tutor moves that you can possibly get. But it's it's very important because, like, I know I personally, like, you, you know, you can't trade over Pokemon that were a uh, Pokegen through the Pokebank. They're not going to work. So it's pretty much only legit stuff. And the last time, like, Garage was offered, it's like 2010 at a GameStop event. That's pretty much the only way to get uh, Jirachi. And I know I have two. I just put Iron Head on them last night. I put Bug Fight on my Scissors. You know, I'm ready to go. <laughs> nice. Is Celebi a lot to be used in regular battles? Or is that oh, a... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. It's not a lot... Actually, not a lot to be used in VGC. All the Pokemon, like Celebi, Jirachi, Mew, Shaman, they're not a lot to be used. Mm. Anyone, if anyone out there in chat, I will trade a Celebi for a Shaman. <laughs> <laughs> a Shaman, I, I forgot that. That's one of your favorites. Shaman yeah. is an adorable Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I think I'm actually going to be the only one at Mages with Celebis. Because, like, think about how good Steel is this gen. It's yeah. just going to kill everyone. And I'm going to use Celebi and Tokus in the same team for double <laughs> Ring Grace hack. That's going to be great. Yeah. That's gonna be uh, gonna be nice. All right, so we can also talk about possible things that could just hit the ban even before Pokebank becomes legal. Because on Showdown, it's been being been tested for ever since the game came out. What Pokebank battles are like, things like Genesect are gonna be legal again. Things like Thunderous are gonna be legal again. Mm. Two Pokemon that I actually don't think should have been Uber. People just they hadn't banned something in a while, so they yeah. had to pick something. <laughs> I really like Genesect, and it 
why it's better than Thunderous. Uh, but I, I think that it, what it offers is it offers Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, and a Stab Bug Buzz, or you dream with the ability download, which multiplies a special attack or attack by 1.5, depending on when you send it out. Mm. So I would just genius in every team, no matter what, ever, forever. So I hope for the <laughs> Personally, it's just me. I love Genus Deck. But. <laughs> he's like a robot, robot purple. He's purple. That's why you like yeah, him. He's... No, I just think he's good. Goes with your persona glasses. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, persona. I'm going to name it Persona. You're going to name it Persona. He's now, a giant, uh, giant cannon. But I, I think Thunderous. Like Thunderous doesn't need a ban either. What he did was he had Prankster, and so people were like, well, he's just going to set up a sub and Thunder Wave and wait till I get paralyzed. Which is what they did, which isn't healthy for the game. But things like Thunderous are we one BGC, so. Having a thunderous is actually very beneficial to you, mm. even if it's banned in small comp. I think Pokemon like that are going to be huge on the GTS. Um, th with the with the Pokemon coming in as well, isn't there like three shiny the the running shinies in X and Y going to be unlocked at the same time? I don't. I've not heard of anything about that. Are you sure? No, I think that they talked about that on Cerebi.net about. Y you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Those three little tiny shiny well not shiny what am i talking about new legendaries, legendaries. they uh the three legendaries they announced uh new legendaries i think they might just do them as events though event pokemon um, okay because that's what some of these other like the shamans no not yeah. shaman but uh genesect was an event event legendary okay it's like if i'm correct i think one of them is actually a fire water type i thought that was kind of interesting we haven't heard a awesome. lot about them yeah uh, have you also heard the rumors about the latius and latio mega evolutions Oh yeah, um, I heard about that as well. Is there Mega Stone yeah. that sold you? I, I, no, they get, it's <laughs> probably some DLC. It could also be just a rumor. I'm sure you guys have seen the sprites for it, but uh, have you have you heard about the abilities they're going to be getting? No, uh, I haven't. No, Mega Latios is going to get adaptability, and Latias is going to be getting uh, multi scale. So adaptability wow. and multi scale. Uh, adaptability makes. Uh, same same type moves uh, you use instead of having a 1.5 boost, they get a 2.0 boost. Uh, oh my so god! It's just... No, it's 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 not really that's hard. That's... No, no, close, close. <laughs> it, it does this pretty much. It makes it gives you an extra stab. So it goes with okay. three point, three point oh. Well, that's even worse that's, than what yeah. Jonathan. I mean, <laughs> that, well, that's better. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's crazy! I was I wasn't. No, that's yeah. crazy. And uh. Was a multi scale? Uh, if you're at full HP, you only take uh, fifty percent damage. Yeah. So, so you get to those be things kind of were King those for things a were while. Uber back in Gen Four and Gen yeah. Three. They were both Uber. Those at the end of Gen Five, Uber. they were taken off the Uber. Way. And I still, I still think they're Ubers because they have Uber stat. Yeah. I personally would 100% vote for them to go Uber immediately before even play. I'm even bad at this game, and I want them to go to Ubers. I don't <laughs> want to fight that. They're they're very yeah. powerful. Uh, the thing is, like, think about it. If you give Latio adaptability it's gonna one-shot blissey with a psy shock <laughs> yeah so what what type of special wall can can actually can fight that, that or yeah. physical there's no counter to that pokemon there would be it would be unfair highly but, unfair. and also their their staff are gonna go through the roof yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> like they're only, already through that, the roof I, I, they're already uber stats they already have like 600 base stats they're gonna go up to like 700 base stats it's just ridiculous yeah. it's it's not gonna be fun it might be fun to use them and just Dominate everything, but uh, it won't. It won't Uber be fair. <laughs> you know, they'll be very competitive in the Uber tier. You yeah. know where they belong, but after, like those things could even go like a tier above Uber. <laughs> yeah. They'll be their own tier. RCS tier. Yeah, that's pretty much all I want to talk about for PokeBank. We okay. covered a lot of BGC stuff. That's the next thing on the list. So we already covered what BGC is. BGC is doubles format with only Kalos native this season. Is that Ander. what we're watching right now? Is VGC? Hmm, uh, no, what we're watching now is just. I think it's just. A, I think it was just multi battle. Oh. I did it on stream. I'm sorry. For okay. Me. So what VGC is is it's doubles format with only Kalos natives, and there's a lot of Pokemon that are legal in VGC that aren't legal in Smog on doubles. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much their own format. And VGC is the only format you can actually play to get a monetary gain, like prizes, invites to worlds, invites to nationals. So VGC is the competitive format put up by Nintendo. It has different. Uh, there's seasons, you know, there's the winter season, the spring season, the uh, the mother season, the autumn season, I guess. Autumn season already passed. Winter season is coming up starting the week of January 19th. There's going to be tournaments in uh, Pleasanton, California, mm. Oregon, uh, Missouri, Florida, and one other place. 
And what you do is you get points for completing those events and how high you place. And at the end of the season, there are the nationals, which are in Gen Con in Indianapolis. Oh, Gen so, Con. I love that place. So that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm planning on going. There's also a last chance qualifier there. So if I don't have enough points to qualify, I'll do that. Top, top like eight or something get in. Nice. So there's there's the winter season coming up. There's also the spring season coming up in April. There's going to be tournaments in uh, San Jose, California, Oregon, maybe Nevada, mm. and then Missouri. I think those are where the tournaments are. And I think like maybe New England. So those are where all the tournaments are. And that, that has its own completely different format things that are we can there, not we want smog on things like a Bayesian clause, Philippe clause. <laughs> so things like that. There's a lot of people using minimize, double team, spore spamming, and all that good stuff. And oh, have, you, have? have you ever Do participated I... in one of those, like the one like you said in Pleasanton? Yeah, I go I've been to a few BGCs event. I've made uh, top twenty, you know, nice. it sucks I didn't get top sixteen. <laughs> yeah. And all of them, those have hundreds of people there. It's anywhere from 300 to 500 people in mm-hmm. each bracket. You know, there's, yeah. the, there's the junior bracket. Those don't have that many people, but it's for the people under 10, I think. The master, the senior bracket is from like 11 to 16, and masters is anyone like 17 or older. Gosh. And they're all spit up into their own bracket. And that's where the highest levels of competitive player actually played in the game or the tournament. Hmm. All right, I'm going to put a link in chat for uh, what I believe is the uh, uh, the Pokemon site where you can you can check and see if there's a regional VGC uh, near you, um, and That's it should be able to list all of, all of them. So uh, that'll be in chat. Um, it should take you to where you need to go. Let me just double check that it worked. I typed it up by hand. Uh, yeah, so if you go to the go to the link, um, you can find the current event uh, regional Pokemon Championships. And then you'll be able to just search for a tournament uh, in your area. And hopefully there's one nearby that you can join. Otherwise uh, we'll be talking about uh, stuff on Twitch. I mean, well, I'll, people will be streaming VGCs, I'm sure, in oh, the Pokemon, Pokemon Pokemon channels on Twitch. Yeah, I know I do pretty much VGC every Tuesday. I usually do VGC stuff, but Someone wants you to talk about the new regions. I've not heard anything about this. It's yeah. Probably just a rumor. Well, the rumor is that apparently some guy, and I think it's inside, I don't remember the city names because I'm terrible with names, but the big damn place where you do the little coin sheet area, you know, big sign circle, main city in this whole XY yeah. game. Um, yeah. He gives you, he talks about. You know, I'm a looker? What's that? Detect- I don't think it's looker, no. but he goes like, not Kento, not Johto, mm-hmm. not Shino. Like, he says, not. Every past region, he goes, not these regions, but this mysterious artifact came from someplace new or something like that. And then it shows you get, like, a random item of, like, a, a statue of something, and it's supposed to come from this new region. Um, that's the yeah. rumor, at least. Um, I don't think it's going to be a new region. It might be a DLC area to get It might be a new area, like uh, yeah. the Victory Island or whatever it was uh, for Victini. Yeah, just like that. <clears throat> I, I think... An, I honestly think that'd be good for the game. I mean, there's so many, there's so many things that I wish that X and Y had. Uh, Pokemon contest. I love Pokemon contest and other mini yeah. games. I thought I'd be able to race my Pokemon. So when I caught my shiny Doduo, I'm like, Psh, you're not battling. You're gonna be racing people. There's just there's so many things in the in the Pokemon universe that they could throw into the games like races or mm-hmm. uh, contests again. Um, I mean, they hey, could revamp contests a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um. Yeah, I, I don't, like you guys said, it could be some kind of DLC mm-hmm. that they add on to X and Y. I honestly believe there has to be a Z coming out, Pokemon yeah. Z. <laughs> so, who knows? Ampharos is going to be the me- the legendary, right? Yeah, exactly. Mega, Mega Ampharos Mega is uh, Pokemon Z. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll see what comes um, <laughs> in the near future. But uh, I think DLC is going to be really possible. We've already seen two updates just come from the eShop. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that just with the 3DS uh, as the product, I think Nintendo can put out uh, the f- like. The, I don't think they. I think they want to do free DLC. I think it would be amazing for them to just release. Uh, we're gonna DLC and it's a couple extra cities and uh, new areas, and then we're, we're gonna have like 20 more Pokemon in the in the Kalos region that you never well, knew about. Have, have you have you heard about Maryland's theory? Uh, Maryland, uh, he has his own site, Maryland.com. That used to be like the smog on it. Used yep. to be smog on direct competitor before. Mm-hmm. No, was really I haven't heard anything popular. about it. So if you look up that on YouTube, you might be able to link it. Uh, just type in Maryland's theory of like new new regions. He made a whole like five ten minute video talking about things he saw in the game and strategy guides that really confirms that there are other regions, and that you will actually be able to 
get in contact. Mm. I think, uh, yeah, I, I can link to the video. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just only describe what the theory is. Going, everyone? He's Maryland using one of the, one of the strategy guys for the game that you cannot get these berries in game. They are only available from other region. Mm. Now we all know that you can't send items through the wonder, like that's right through the Poke Bank. That means that you are eventually going to be able to have to be able to go to these regions to get the game because you can get these berries there available in the game only in other regions. I see. That's his theory. And I mean, we've already seen like DLC come out. That means that's, that's actually definitely a possibility. Yeah. I think it'd be really cool to see uh, new stuff I, come I, out. I wouldn't be surprised if they just said like, you know, scratch Pokemon Z and just went to like Pokemon, pay like 40 bucks, get that Z. There's no actual Z cartridge. It's just DLC. Uh, so the next DLC. Pack. I, mm -hmm. uh, do you think that'd be something that people would be more happy about, or I don't even? Well, all right, all right. Why would you? Why would they make you just buy a whole new game, Pokemon Z, when they could just get Pokemon Expansion Pack? Because what what are Z's? You know, Z, Crystal, Yellow, uh, Emerald. Mm -hmm. What are they other than Expansion Pack? You mm -hmm. and you have to restart everything. Also Platinum, and then we had. Uh, I think the the real uh, trend that we're seeing was uh, after Platinum. We had uh, black and white, and then they just released two sequels, black and black two, and white two. I think yeah. what they'll do with this, it might not just be another cartridge sequel. I think it might be an expansion pack. An X two, Y two, <laughs> something like that. An yeah, X two, an X two, everything's surprised. female. X. <laughs> hey, then yeah, X two and X Y. You know, <laughs> get a Kleinfelter's X X Y. You know. Uh, yeah, that, that's one of. Them. I really agree with what Marilyn was saying there. I, I, yeah. I like it. I like the fact that someone's paying attention close enough detail to the fact that, you know, the, the whole berry idea, in a sense, it could be a huge tell. Um, but you need the berries to play doubles, pretty much. Oh, definitely. Berries are such a huge part of battling. I mean, when I was little, I used to think that they were stupid. I'm like, well, I'm going to only heal 10 HP? That's <laughs> dumb. <laughs> but, no. Berries, I was yeah, up. <laughs> berries have I definitely to... pro proven to be very important. Yep. I used all my berries before the first gym every time, man. Those are the best things in the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so one thing we can also talk about is uh, the next topic, because we're starting to get on a little bit of a tangent, is uh, pretty much Pokemon Showdown. Now, Pokemon for Showdown. those of you who don't know, Pokemon Showdown is the simulator made by Smogon where you can go and play against people all over the world for free. You pretty much make your team, make your EVs, select your items, and it's a simulator with rankings and ladders. And depending on how high your ranking is, you potentially have the option of voting on picks and ban for Smogon. So you get to That's basically one... join that council of Smogon? If you do well enough. I see. Yeah, it used to be you just had a certain rating, like over 2200, you could just vote. But they pretty much lowered the council to be a lot less people. That's so like five or six people, and you know, if you're a very outstanding member in the community, then you can potentially get uh, those privileges. Mm -hmm. So that's how they decide who gets a vote and who doesn't is by uh, your, your 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 uh, skill on uh, Pokemon Showdown. I see. And in a sense, like a program like this allows so many people to really test out a team before mm -hmm. they actually want to put the dedication to train it. Right? Yeah, that's what it's for. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, I wouldn't actually. I would. I'd recommend to some people that are starting to get good, that are starting to get into the game, just go into Showdown and just watching people battle because you can spectate anyone's game, just watching <clears> battle. <throat> Something very or you can innovative. Play free. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. You can just play free rating too. You don't get rated or anything. You just play for fun. Play for fun. Yeah, and I was about to say is like something very interesting about the whole um, innovativeness of of that Pokemon Showdown was that they were doing X and Y battles with 2D sprites even to try to allow people to really get a feel for what could be there, right? Oh yeah. Like that's yep. that's dedication, you know. And they've been playing with Pokebank ever since the game came out not just recently you know like things with heatran and all those things so when heatran and heatran and landers come mm -hmm. you're gonna see a huge switch in the metagame oh definitely. and those people that play on showdown have the heads up on what's good have a little bit of an edge mm -hmm. definitely that's all i really want to cover for showdown it's not only that, mm -hmm. that it's a useful i put a link in the chat um if you want it it is uh uh it is uh Free and it's a useful tool for for testing out teams before you before you breed them. Yeah, because breeding still takes some time. Definitely. Uh, so always respect your chat. breeders. Hi, Joseph is. Joseph. Joseph, I'm in San Diego. 
in a library. <laughs> Anyways, so next thing we can really cover. What how long have we been doing this for? We've been in this call um, for over. Like, we have 55 making... minutes on stream. Um, we can always cut down for YouTube. Uh, well, that's fine. No, no big deal. Yeah, I'm just talking to us for a sec. Yeah, Joseph, I actually might go to dinner with Hi Hi. I talked to him about it already. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so let's get back on track. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about was our local tournaments we run. So why don't you take it from there, Jonathan? All right, uh, you want okay, the local tournament that we have here at uh, Mage's Realm. Um, Mage's Realm, Sacramento on Arden. Arden yeah. Street. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I don't actually, uh, well, I don't want to pull up the, neck, the scene for the we for the tournament, but we, uh, we stream it every Friday night, uh, Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Uh, we get, I think, about... 15, 15 people entered last week. Uh, we had some really high-level players who uh, come out. So the, the top four is always uh, some pretty high-level people. Um, it's fun to watch. We cast every game that we can. Uh, we don't cast all of, all of them. But uh, we try to get at least a couple games uh, each round to be cast. Uh. And then also in the Sacramento region, there's Metropolis. Uh, well, that's Elk Grove, technically. Uh, yeah, it's the Sacramento area still. They do a tournament on Sundays that we started to stream. Uh, they do it at about 3 p.m. Pacific time, uh, and some some uh, high levels uh, come out for that too. Uh, what you'll see there is basically I shine, I and uh, some other people. Um, we we also try to stream that one. We cast battles. Uh, so if you wanna come by the stream, uh, either my stream or I shine stream, uh, we'll be broadcasting those tournaments live. Uh, we started to do um, we play by basically smog on bands, um, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. And uh, we were thinking of playing doubles in Metropolis, remember? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and even at Mages, uh, I think they were thinking about once a month uh, switching over to VGC format just to get, uh, get the people, feel for people prepared. People prepared yeah, for get, VGCs. Prepared. Uh, and or be able to practice against competitive. Yeah, and a definitely a, a way different feel from what we're doing right now. Right now, uh, we're trying to get information to you guys to maybe get prepared for these Friday tournaments, Saturday tournaments, whatever. Um, so if if you're interested in mostly about the battling or something like that, the the cast will have a way higher energy, yeah, uh, way more fun. Not as as formal. This is more of a hard podcast, podcast, Goldenrod Radio. Yeah, Goldenrod Radio, trying to get you the best information that we can possibly get to you guys. Mm -hmm. We um, need one of those buttons you can press and be like, like, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can just do that. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Goldenrod like, also, you wanna, you wanna Radio. You want to talk about prizes that we offer? Um, people with the reason they come. Oh, definitely. I I'll, I'll do that. Go ahead. We give store credit. The stores both give store credit. It's pretty cheap to enter. It's usually like three to five bucks, depending on your tournament. And we give a shiny out of the shiny box, out of the little toy box, shiny box. Legit. And shinies. we're also thinking of doing um, like strategy guides or once a month talking about raffling. I mean, we could actually talk about raffling, stuff, but maybe once a month instead of just like a prize like that, we could do a copy of X or Y, like a five dollar tournament at the end of the month, and just use two dollars of the the fee to pay for the game and those would probably be like 15 to 20 people minimum but mm -hmm. that'd be that'd be a lot of fun various pokemon you know related paraphernalia um yeah yeah the the price support right now mostly mostly being star creative but definitely will evolve as we as we get bigger and we said we have like what 14 people yep. already and it's still growing like because this is generally very new uh, yeah. we're also working on a twitch uh twitch format tournament which uh, will have uh, I Shine and I will stream um, battles yeah. for that. And the pr first one we're going to do will be free. Uh, Sign-ups for that will be available probably uh, first week of January. Um, yeah, and I think what we can offer for prizes would be like, a, what were you saying, Jonathan? The, the, prize? The, prize, the prize for the first one, like grand prize, was probably going to be a, a full uh, EV trained, IV bred uh, Pokemon, uh, just ready to competitive, ready for competitive battle. Right off and maybe like it's uh, shiny or something? Um, if, if we can get a shiny, uh, then yeah, yeah. I think I talked to Sean about that, but also another thing that I can offer as a prize is, uh, we sell posters from the GameStop release, we can give that stuff away. Yep. We also have strategy guides. I actually, down in San Diego, I picked up a couple brand new strategy guides for X and Y, and, uh, Black and White 2, you know, the full Pokedex that shows low level everything learns, their moves, what egg moves they are, what, uh, what egg group they are, who you need yep. to breed with, what to get what, the even though we're already in X and Y, things like that are still extremely useful. Yeah. We were also going to raffle so off some probably... uh, 5 IV Pokemon uh, during the tournament itself uh, for people That's watching and for people, for people uh, 
who are actually battling. Uh, so that even though if like even if you're not the best player, just by entering, it's possible that you'll be able to win win something. Sounds great to me. Uh, so look for that in January. Um, we'll we'll start doing signups. Uh, try to get everything squared away. All right. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about the local tournament? Um, I think we covered a lot for the for the local local tournaments. Uh, was uh, were we going to take questions now um, from any viewers? Uh, not yet. We want to talk about Instacheck first. Okay, yeah, Instacheck, the Great Plague. Yes. So why don't you cover that? All right. Uh, you... I was going to say a little bit of a segue into that. The fact that people generally make their own programs and stuff like that. We we just talked about Smog on very extensively, along with Pokemon Showdown, and it. it's a emulator in itself of Pokemon, and there's a lot of inventive people out there, and I will say that the Pokemon community generally have very smart people. We've seen on websites such as Kotaku, a man who made a machine just to find himself some cat, catch some shiny Pokemons for himself and stuff, but um, the, the latest, I would say, um, big program that hit the internet was Instacheck, right? I would say so. Uh, what Instacheck did was... Uh, it used your Nintendo 3DS's uh, Wi-Fi connection, uh, whether you were battling or uh, trading, um, and it could uh, it could open it could it could then look at your game and it could tell you what Pokemon uh, what Pokemon that was being showed. It could tell you all of its uh, IVs, uh, its spread. Um, I believe it could tell you its EV spread too. It could tell you all its move sets. It could tell you its nature, uh, what gender it was, what ability it had, and uh, if you, there was an exploit to use it battling online, where you could actually see what move. Uh, the the Pokemon had used uh, before you uh, bef be like before you chose your move in battling them. So people were using it uh, during for raiding battles, and that's why they shut down raiding battles in mid November uh, because people were uh, using this exploit. Mm -hmm. um, the other exploit that they were the, the other thing that they were using Instacheck for was for shinies. Uh, every individual trainer uh, has a shiny value, and every egg has a has a different shiny value. So, uh, and the shiny value is like four to five digits. So if, you, if an egg's shiny value matches the trainer shiny value and the trainer hatches that egg, then it'll come out shiny every time, as long as the numbers match. And I was about to say, and that's what it was originally intended for, was for a way to, to make it so that people can connect, kind of like a, a what do you call it, friend finder or, or a Zeus or something like that, like a dating website where you got to get paired up with a trainer to make these perfect shiny eggs that you guys would definitely be able to, to get a shiny Pokemon, but you know, with with great power comes with great responsibilities, and people decided to run away with that and uh, make a basically like a spy network almost of, of people yep. being able to, to watch your every Pokemon move. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with the latest patch, uh, one point two, um, the last update that you downloaded for uh, Pokemon Pokemon X and Y, I think it was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that uh, Instacheck no longer functions. They've re-encrypted the uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, trade trade in battles so I mean like it's a little bit of a scary thought to think that you know like I don't know South Park did a little spoof about how the government is watching you could you imagine if you if you're being watched by random Brazilian number one just, who's just wanting to beat you in Pokemon so bad <laughs> you know it's a scary thought well it was something that you had to use because you had to connect uh, your Three, they, they would have to be battling you already. Oh, okay, so they, ha they um, would have to have seen it was you. What you did was you connected... Uh, you, you had the Pokemon on your computer. You had your computer uh, create a wireless hotspot, mm -hmm. and then you connected your 3DS to that. Wow. And then uh, when your 3DS was connected through uh, Nintendo Wi-Fi connection to another 3DS, then you also got to see their, their stuff. If you were doing a trade, most people uh, open a trade window, and you show an egg, and then uh, you see all its uh, IVs. And you see what nature it is. You see if it's uh, male or female. Yes, and then you, most importantly, you see its shiny value, so you can find somebody else on either. Uh, so I think Reddit had a big site. Um, Reddit had a huge site for it. It had uh, its own full, community. Yeah, full subreddit that was really extensive. Mm -hmm. um, so oh. I haven't talked in a while. What I'm <laughs> going to talk about, I was on you. I said, I, I copied your Facebook post, eager, and Facebook posted the like, exact same thing. You covered everything I wanted to say. But uh, about like the, uh, the stream going live, that's a little off topic thing but anyways like instacheck what that does for the game in my opinion it's very unhealthy when you look at pokemon pokemon is a kid game it's made for kids we're not supposed to teach kids that cheating is good 
No, yeah, definitely. Right? Yeah. When it comes down to it, that's cheating. It's, it's cheating, it, yeah. It's cheating, and it should definitely be punished. Now, I know that there's no way they can really go and punish those people that did it, but I'm sure that there's going to be a way to check what Pokemon were into the check, and I really think those po people should get banned from BPPs, which is my two cents. Yeah, I was like, about I to would, say... I'm, oh, go ahead. If I'm playing in a BPC, and I'm like, wow, your whole team's shiny, it's like, oh yeah, dude, into check right before it went down, I would definitely call for it. I would definitely call for a DQ because mm -hmm. that's cheating. Yeah, and, and I mean, and, and ge generally, any kind of like secret information that you're grabbing, you know, with so, like it, the process itself and being able to yeah. do that shows extensively how unethical it, it is. It's, you know, you're you're basically hacking the connection between uh, your game and the internet. You're tapping. Uh, <laughs> you're tapping a, a whole network. Um, perfect one up brings up a, a he says can the possibility of instacheck being updated as well to work with the new patch be a thing um it, it is possible i think you can see that as like the constant battle between jailbreaking iphones yeah. and apple um uh, they could try but nintendo is a huge company itself with tons of coders and programmers that are watching out for that that could instantly try to release another patch just to, mm -hmm. to foil that again um what what the pat this original patch did is show the community that nintendo is aware of of the these kind of things happening and they don't like it you know yeah. that they're going to take their their time and and be responsible and making sure that the community is healthy themselves all right so that's pretty much all we wanted to talk about is a check right mm -hmm. no, i think so really Okay, so what was next was we have like the interact with chat. Is there any questions that the chat had? Yeah, if you guys have anything that you guys want to know about or you know any suggestions on on what we could talk about for you guys, please let us know through chat. You know, we'll we'll, we'll stick around for it. Yeah, is there uh, from the chat any questions that you have? Just type them out. We can answer any questions you have. Uh... On a side note, while we wait. Um, I do have a poem. Oh, a golden uh, radio. <laughs> well, uh, our our Pokemon professor uh, in training would like to read <laughs> some poetry on this uh, Goldenrod Radio broadcast. So, All right, it's a haiku, producer. All right, Scyther, green and sleek, Scizor, your claws have become bullet punch. Hard fought. <laughs> wait, wait, what was the last word? Hard fought. You should say swords dance. Swords dance. Swords dance. That's bullet that. punch. Swords dance. Scizor. Yeah, because it needs five syllables at the Scizor. end. Scizor, right? your claws have become bullet punch. Swords, Swords dance. dance. <laughs> That's like saying you got a backup mic right here, <laughs> like mic one, mic two. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed. Where that. Where can you find a hat that looks like a Wobbuffet? Um, or a Ditto. Or a Ditto. Uh, Etsy is where. Well, I didn't really get it. On. I had a friend who has an Etsy shop who all who made this hat. Um, I think there's someone in the chat who makes hats. <laughs> plug, plug. <coughs> <coughs> wink, wink. Uh, that uh, so I can, uh, I don't even remember what the, if you go to Etsy and you search Pokemon hats, there's a lot of options there. There's several uh, versions of a Wava hat. One of them is this one that was uh, made by a friend of mine. Uh, I think it was 25 bucks. Uh, yeah, that one. The smiley face in the, the person, chat. Yeah, uh, the person who just posted a smiley face. That's human. They're not gonna see it for forty to. seconds, but that. Oh, very true. Yeah, sorry just, about uh, that forty second. <laughs> um, and and we'll be sporting more Pokemon hats. Like we'll be modeling them. So you know, if you, eventually we would think maybe business cards or something like that for that person, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. To make you should you should shop. definitely make your own Etsy shop. Definitely, uh, Dragon Dia. It would. Uh, you, you could sell these uh, just these people lots of Pokemon hats because they these they really like this people. one, and they want uh, they want their awesome battling hats. Yeah, they need nothing like this. This hat makes me better at Pokemon uh, when I when I play in games. When you talk about getting your thinking cap on, boom! <laughs> what better Pokemon than Wobbuffet? Wow! <laughs> All right, uh, we could so, have a fashion show. <laughs> I pretty much think that that was most of what we wanted to cover for this first broadcast, right? Uh, yeah. So Definitely thanks, all thanks the topics we wanted us. to hit. Uh, are we going to try to make this weekly? Okay. I, I, yeah, I'm thinking about making it weekly, I but... we really do. I think it's like Smogcast is whenever they get around to doing it. Mm -hmm. And that this is, like, could be better than Smogcast. 
Uh, let's talk about Alex said, uh, how do we deal with the work side of Pokemon? Um, Alright, well, you go ahead and start. Yeah. I'll, we'll chime in after that. Yep. Okay. Well, what I feel with the RNG is very... It, it's, it's hard to say, you know. It pretty much makes people be safer than they should. Because everyone could just put Inferno in all their fire types and everyone could have everything. And it, I think the luck side is what makes it competitive. People say, like, oh, RNG, you know, missing with a move when it takes no skill to, like, hit or miss a move. People don't like that, but, you know, being able to choose the correct move for the right situation and taking gambles like that, I think that's what makes the game competitive and really what sets it apart from other games that are very similar. Yeah, going on with that, I mean, like, I think games in general, mm -hmm. like, if you want to go into college-level game theory or whatever, the, the fact that there's chances for such events to occur, that's, like playing a card game and wondering constantly what what card you're going to top deck or playing Monopoly and you really want triple doubles for some reason because you want to go to jail so that you can collect from your friends still without being risked to pay rent. Um, that's what makes games fun. You know, randomosity. Yeah. If everything's a formula, then in the there was a video game called Loom Mines where it was kind of like a Tetris-esque game but someone found the formula on how to make sure you could break every single block whenever you wanted to, and that game died. So They've done the same thing with Sudoku, uh, that you can, I think there's a, there's a Google app that can take a picture of a Sudoku mm -hmm. and just solve it for you. So uh, I, I huh. think things like, like criticals, like misses, those, those luck factors is what makes the game that you love a little bit more special mm -hmm. because once in a while you're probably praying for a yeah. miss or a flinch or whatever, you know. Well, so. sometimes, sometimes, you know, like, your only option is to be like, well, if this doesn't crit, you know, that's game. Yeah. You know, and you, you need to plan your strategy around that. It's like, well, I can only kill this Pokemon if I get a crit from this other Pokemon from my team. So I need to safely get in this Pokemon without it dying while preserving as much of my team as I can. And then I, I think that that's a big goal to do that. <laughs> Perfect one-ups example of being frozen for eight turns. Yep. Um, that, I mean, that's classic. You it's know? Like, it's that never sucks. fun to hit yourself <laughs> in confusion every time. Yeah. Listen, I, have a, I was playing in the last <laughs> professional tournament I played in Gen 4. I had a Dragonite out, and my opponent had an Electabar out, both by last Pokemon. Yes, an Evire in the red. I'm paralyzed from a Thunder Wave earlier in the map. I have a choice stand on, and I'm just trying to extreme speed to finish him off. Paralyzed, eight turn. Oh he God. just is like perfect one of eight turns in a row, paralyzed. And I lost. In the, in the finals. And that's no the game. No one thought I was bad. Everyone knew I was better than the person because I set it up to win that way. But, you know, it should happen. And you exactly. just got to deal with it. Sometimes you can uh, be fighting a Togekiss and it'll flinch seven times in a row killing three of your Pokemon. <laughs> that's terrible. And you can't do anything <laughs> about it because it's, it's wearing a choice scarf. Yeah. Yeah. It's faster. That's like... Maybe that's why Ash's Pikachu is so broken. It's just its <laughs> luck factor was so high, yeah. and it just kept critting, just and that's why Giovanni wanted it, you know? Well, let's look at what Perfect 1-Up does in chat. Then you've run into missing overheat five times in five different battles, or being put to sleep in the five bottles on my Rotom Heat. And what you can do is you can not run Rotom Heat. You could run, like, let's say, a Ninetale, and you slam through with 100% accuracy, or you could put a Chesco Berry on your Rotom Heat. There's ways to play around that. You're the one taking your risk by using that Pokemon. Mm -hmm. It's how you manage those risks that really make yeah, your team special. Yeah, that's what makes you a better player. Yep, trying to push the things into your favor. Um, if you're if you're noticing that that happens to you a lot, and you want to make sure that that doesn't happen, I mean, you have berries, you have items to, you have abilities and different Pokemon to use. We said there's like 700 different Pokemon to use. Over. Just because it's not in OU doesn't mean that you can't use it. Um, and then there's also things you can do, like maybe kiss your Game Boy right before you do the move, see yep. if that helps. Use your lips to, to confirm that you want to use that move <laughs> yep. or something. If you, if you believe in your Pokemon, uh, like, wholeheartedly, sometimes they'll just... I, had a, I, I really believed in a match I was playing. I believed in my <laughs> Gyarados, and it crit with a waterfall. No, it flinched flinched with a waterfall twice in a row, and that's a 10% chance. That's bullcrap. So, uh, <laughs> you know what? And that, that, that was uh, streamed. That game was streamed, yep. and there you was can, no other way you could have won that game. Nope. Mm -mm. So, you need both of them. But I believed in Gyarados. <laughs> believed in, your, believe and, in uh, your Pokemon. And he pulled through. <laughs> so sometimes uh, 
the luck factor. I mean, it just it makes the game so much more interesting. Because if it was just uh, every time you hit and every time you missed and there was a set damage that, that did things this. did, then it's just a bunch of mathematics that there's no. There's, it, there wouldn't it wouldn't be as much fun. I don't think exactly. if you couldn't. Again, if you might as well just crit. stream calculator battles. Yeah. Exactly. I'll play my TI eighty nine Silver Edition Plus versus your TI eighty three, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> you know, like. Uh, I see that we've we've gotten a little bit of a jump in viewers right now. What we're doing, we're end, we're at the end of our show currently. Uh, we're taking viewer questions or anything as you want to ask us real quick before oh, we actually what, sign let's, off. Let's answer Alex's new question. What okay. kind of team, comp two team, think is stronger? Wall talk, the bell teams, or hyper aggressive teams? Um, well, really, they both have their strengths and weaknesses. When games come out, it's always the aggressive teams that take the lead. And by the end, once the meta actually settles down and everyone knows what's good, you really see the abundance of all team. Now personally my playstyle was very aggressive. I think that walls are meant to be broken. And you know, you there's always a way to get around wall. People because it takes no no skill to play wall team. Or the amount of skill it takes to play them is a lot less. Because they can always be like, oh I'll just switch here. It's very easy to predict what wall teams are gonna do. But that's just my Thoughts on it. I was like, I think the Great Wall of China should never be broken. I just wanted to <laughs> toss that out there. It's uh, and that it takes great skill in building walls, but I, don't, I wouldn't. I, w I don't. I don't think I would ever want to run a full team of like just yeah. walls. Uh, I might run a stall combo. Uh, like uh, what I've seen a couple times in uh, our local tournament was uh, is a Glitzcore Bliss combo um, or a Skarm Bliss combo. Uh, mm -hmm that it just uh, switches um, as far as just being able to, to stall out when you need to but also to have some sweepers to be able to just take out the team because a full stall really team like, it's it would... not a wall team yeah this, well, I, I mean but that's what he was saying is that he doesn't think that a straight up wall team is a thing to run but a mix still so like the yeah. traditional mix of Pokemon is what what Jelly Sound's saying that he would like to run because mm -hmm. then if they if they bring some wall breakers then you're uh you're all screwed. You want to have a good balance, I think. Um, they bring it to but it, it definitely takes into account towards the beginning. You see aggressive teams uh, coming coming strong, and then st uh, stall teams are a little better. I think at the, at the end of Gen Four, I made a team. It was the most undefeatable team. There's no way to beat. Them. No, really. I'm, I'm, I'm not like lying, but like straight to this team. <laughs> I won every game without finishing the game because. What I would do is I'd lead with the Smurgle, and I'd try to put up, I wouldn't lead with it if it's obviously not the right thing to lead with, but I would try to put up like a Spore, put up a Sub, put up an Ingrain, and put up a, a Baton Pass off to my Torterra. I used Torterra over Venusaur for certain reasons. And what I would do was I would Leech Seed. Now, I can't switch, I'm Ingrain. Now, it has like Leech Seed, and I would just Toxic Leech Seed down all their Pokemon, all of them. Jeez. And I'm gaining more health back each turn, or even if I'm using Struggle, you can't. I, I won't kill myself because you're getting because of the ingrain and the lefties and the leech seed. Oh my god, that's disgusting. So <laughs> what I would do was, uh, I, I would pretty much put up. I would like to, before I put on past. I'd like to put up three layers of spikes and stealth rock and stuff like that, which it wasn't hard in Gen Four. It was very easy, and just pretty much sit there and be like, all right, I'm going to be on autopilot for the next forty minutes without attacking you one. And I won every battle I played online with. The only time that I lost was against Dust. And that was when the team was in uh, testing stages and I had wood hammer on my torch there just for a while. <laughs> but other than that, you know, I would I played probably 40 or 50 games and it was a single game. Didn't ever have to finish one. People just turned their games off. I see. You, you broke the spirits. Yeah, there's two ways of winning Pokemon. That's... Defeat the Pokemon or defeat the trainer. Did you have fun <laughs> doing that? No, it was not fun. That's, and, the thing that's... Is like, and the thing is, I can't stop it. I'm ingrained. I can't switch. You know, yeah. I have to stay in. <laughs> you don't have a choice. Yep, I don't have a choice. Think Talonflame so can get past that? Can Talonflame beat that? No. You no. can't kill a Torterra in one hit with a physical attack. And I have a sub up the whole time. Yeah. Gosh. Now he's get, he gets it back oh every time. Oh my god, that's so the... gross, I shine. <laughs> uh, it's not as good now, but in Gen 4, there was like no way to beat that team. Because everything was so, like, Crystallia, Blisky, Garmory centric. Uh huh. That I was just. And you also can't war win someone out if they have an ingrain. That's true. There's there's nothing that those three Pokemon, which when every team could do against my team, not a single thing could be done. Half the time they didn't even break my sub when they attacked. And they took probably 20-30% of their health when they swapped in, 20-30% of their health each turn from Wheat Seed and uh, a Sandstorm that was going because I had Titar on the team. 
And Wait, even if you try to like, if you pretty much the only way people realize they could win is that they beat, beat me out. But I had one move that had like 48 BP. So I could just use that. And if you were to switch every single turn, you just kill yourself from all the hazard. God. Of course, I'd play it smart. Like if I knew they had a spinner, I wouldn't really send out my combo until a spinner was gone. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a Gengar on the team to block rap. It's like I could, I wasn't retarded. I wasn't just like, oh, we're talking pass off Smurgle for like third turn of the game and go for the win. It was probably turn 40 when I would actually send out the full combo. Mm -hmm. It was just six walls. Yeah, I, I will say that I think that the whole, you know, sweep teams, the whole in your face aggressive teams are a lot more exciting to watch too. Yeah. Um, and also, like with that team, going back to, I'm not going to talk about it. You know, like, if you had a choice scarf, you were screwed. If you had a choice item, you were screwed. If you had a focus out, you were screwed. And if you did manage to kill Torterra, mm -hmm. which happened, I also had the Venusaur so I could do the team exactly again. And I also had Guitar, Gengar, Merkel, and the mother. Oh, uh, Skarmory. Mm. So, I mean, like, you you have succeeded in killing my Torterra. Yeah. And well, at the time, that was, like, a really big Pokemon. Nothing really break it. And what you have left to fight the rest of my team with, which is still extremely pissed off, and you do the same combo again, is a bunch of things that are in the red. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, that's that. Well, I think that if there's no other questions that... Uh... <laughs> Sean just got here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. we, we discussed the metagame. Um, as soon as we stop the stream, the, the, the bottle, bottle pop up. up so, uh, <laughs> sorry you're I late. need to talk to Sean anyways. So um, I want to try and meet him up for down here. Right. Oh yeah, Sean. Are I'll, you, do, uh, I'll do that eventually. Right, I'll, I'll do that after the chat. Yeah, we just started talking about everything. We, we, we should really watch the VOD. <laughs> uh, I'll probably upload it to my YouTube eventually too. Mm -hmm. So what we can do then, is there any more questions that anyone has? Yep, we'll take some that. last questions and then uh, I'll stop uh, first first Goldenrod Radio broadcast. We had a poem, we had uh, good topics. I, I hope <laughs> that you guys had a lot of fun. Um, as, as you'll be able to see in the uh, broadcast, uh, there's we've got an email and a Twitter for this this specific broadcast uh, that will uh, be able to answer questions. And if you want to submit uh, topics that you want us to talk about, uh, just email them to radiogoldenrod at gmail.com. And uh, we'll get to them, and we'll try to make this a weekly thing, Mondays. Uh, Monday, I think. Yeah, definitely Mondays. On Mondays should be good. That's and also, uh, I don't know if... Uh, be sure to like follow the channels here. Be sure to follow Jelly Sounds channel. I also have a Twitch channel, which is yep. the exact same name as my name, U I E underscore S H I N E. That's pretty much all I have up today. Yep, I don't have anything. <laughs> you guys are just gonna see me pop up every uh, once in a while. He does. He does have a Twitter at Broducer. Oh, he yeah. just He just made it for Th this. Those uh, are our Twitter broadcast. handles. So, um, if you want to follow that there, you can always shoot us messages over there as well. Uh, yeah, and for Pokemon, uh, if you follow my. Uh, my Twitter, um, and you like just throw out your friend code, uh, and I'm available to, to battle. Then I'll 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 probably battle you, uh, or tell you that like wait an hour and then I'll battle you. Yep. And again, this is episode one. Yep. So hopefully we'll we'll evolve. You know. <laughs> Maybe we'll get like a green thing back there. Maybe. Yeah. But <laughs> we'll see what we can get for you guys later. Um, so, I shine. You have nothing else to say, right? Uh, no, I'm pretty much pretty much done. done All right. Subscriber. Thanks, everyone, uh, for stopping by. Uh, we'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>